Elliot from the Bear Pit TV with the Bear Pit Pod. Welcome to Matty Everington. Pleasure to have you on the, the podcast, mate. Stoke City hero, and I don't think that's no, been uh, without, banded around like some people throw the word legend hero I think about. That's very justified, yeah. Hero, Stoke legend, yeah. Yeah, as we speak, Stoke playing in a preseason. <laughs> Jesus oh, Christ. Yeah. Stoke yeah. speaking in a pre uh, spoke in a preseason friendly against St. Pauli in the losing 2 1. Do you, can you ever read much into preseason too much, or what did, what did you make of it? No. Like, do results matter? No, not at all. Not for me, especially with. Tony Pulis, we used to have pre-season with him and you'd be uh, training three times a day before the game, so you can't take nothing from, from pre-season games, um, apart from young performance maybe, and just building up fitness. Don't read into it too much. No. If so. you have experienced a manager that would have a rant pre-season, the same sort of sense you might join the season, lack of uh, effort yeah, or energy? No, unless, you, unless the performance wasn't, you know, was really, really poor and it wasn't good enough and he expected better from the players and he knows the players are better, yeah. then... Yeah, maybe, but it is purely about fitness pre-season and it, you hear it all the time, but that's what it's about. Like, I don't think the players get too downbeat about results or, or anything like that. And, and obviously Stoke have, have had some bad results in pre-season, but it, it's all about that first day. It's, that's all it's about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, we'll go through your sort of career and your time at Stoke, but you started off in um, Cornwall, where you used to live, yeah. and obviously you were spotted by Barry Fry. Like, when you yeah. get spotted by a person like that, do you still keep in touch at all? Or I've, I've probably spoke to him about a year, but actually it wasn't Barry that, that spotted me. It was uh, the youth felon officer at the time at Peterborough called right, Kit okay. Carson, and Barry was manager at Peterborough. Right. Um, but then obviously I got to know Barry after that. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I don't really speak to, to Kit anymore either. Just you know, lucky enough to get spotted and. They thought I had a bit of talent and went up to Peterborough. My family moved up with me, which was a huge ask and a huge commitment for them. The system wasn't too happy. <laughs> um, and yeah, changed schools midway through secondary school, which wasn't easy either. Yeah. Uh, but it was the right decision because you know Peterborough invested a lot of time into me and I ended up making my debut at 15, so it was amazing. Just going to go on to that, yeah. I mean, you, you debut at 15, what's that like doing it at such a young age? And like, you know, what, what other, did other, some other pros help you or? Oh, it's scary, really scary. I'm, we, I'll never forget it. They had to ask the headmaster to get um, the permission for me to play. It's my last year. I was doing my GCSEs, yeah. and um, yeah, I was just in awe. Really, people were in League Two at the time, I think, and we played Brentford away on the last game of the season. And uh, yeah, I was just—I thought I was in too deep. But I, I done well on the day. I was—I got clapped off when I come off us. Um, in about the 86th, 87th minute, the, the, everyone in the ground clapped me off, so I must have done okay, and that was just a, um, the start of things to come. I, was, I just wanted to be a footballer then. Yeah. I've wanted to be a footballer since I was knee high, really, but that just confirmed it to me, you know. Yeah. yeah. How did you shape, I mean, when I, if you see a 15-year-old, I just couldn't imagine them playing professional football. Mm. How did you shape up physically compared oh, to physically, other players? Oh, physically, I was like, you know, just, there was nothing to me. <laughs> Man against boys. Uh, yeah, Brian Statham yeah. was the, um, the right back at, at Brentford at the time. He, had a decent career, played for Spurs at the time as well, and I nutmegged him in the first few minutes. Yeah. And uh, he said to me, if you do that again, I'll have him break your legs. <laughs> and I was like, obviously a 15 year old lad, I was like, jeez. So it took me a while to get to get my composure after that, but it was just an unbelievable experience, like you said, for a 15 year old lad to, to be playing professional football. Um, I felt privileged, but it was also experience as well. Yeah. And then leading on from your performances for the posh you eventually went on trial with Man United yeah what was what happened there what was made you not sign for them or what what I happened no really it was a strange one me and Simon uh, Davis who I'm still friends with now um, got invited up there we would break into the first thing at Peter at the time and um, doing really well and Sir Alex Ferguson invited us up there um, so it was him personally him gave personally, it about. yeah and um, and was it and was it the Treble winning season. The stuff was, before yeah. that. It was a treble winning season, and it was it was the most bizarre situation. We both had sponsored cars by Peugeot with our names on the side. <laughs> Why? In, Matthew Everton, in Peterborough, they sponsored us because we were the up and coming things. And <laughs> so we drove up there, and we, we drove into the Cliff Training Ground in the car park. You got Ferraris and Lamborghinis and all sorts around us, and people were looking around like, who are these? Just hundreds of people outside the training ground after looking for autographs. And we're like, you know, we did, we were just so in awe. We thought we were going to go and train with the first team. Um, gone up to see Sir Alex Ferguson in his office about nine o'clock in the morning, and uh, he's gone. No, boys, I'm, I'm going to put you in, uh, change him with the first team, and you're going to be training with the first team as well. The treble winning first team. The treble wow. winning first team. So we've gone into this change room. I think I'm 17. I think Simon's 18 or 19, and um, you know, Roy Keane, Teddy, <laughs> Gary Neville, 
you know, you name it, the team they had then was sensational. So um, it was it was an experience we'll never ever forget. And we started training that morning. We did the warm up, and then they did boxes, four or five on the outside, two in the middle. And because uh, we were the two youngest, we went in the middle. We had skulls on the outside, Beckham. Uh, Gary Neville, wow. Nicky Butt, and, a, and one other, and we were in there 15 minutes. So you couldn't incredible. get the ball off them. Did you have much, much kind of interaction with the Beckham, Keane, Skulls? Not did really, no, no, not really. But uh, I don't know. Probably wouldn't expect them to speak to us, but no. it was just a pleasure to be there because they they were the team. Well, they're probably one of the best teams ever, aren't they? So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, just to have that experience alone was, was sensational. Yeah. How how did it eventually come about then? The move to Tottenham. It was weird because we left um, Manchester United and we, we had a game on a Saturday and he'd come to the Thursday and Sir Alex Ferguson had gone away. Um, I don't know where he'd gone, but we played Sao Paulo, um, no, Boca Junior, sorry, in a friendly and he watched the first half. I was used to the first half. And in the second half, I'd done really well. But he'd already gone, he'd got on a plane to go somewhere. Yeah. Um, and we didn't hear nothing back. So we, we rang Barry Fry that night on Thursday night and said, Barry, we've got a game Saturday. Um, well, you know what's going on? He said, "No, just come back." So we come back, and apparently he talked to Barry Fry. Barry told us a couple of weeks later and said that he likes both of us, um, but he's going to monitor our progress really. So that that was that was that, and then um, that was in the summer, and then we moved to Spurs in January. And it didn't work out at Tottenham straight away. No, it's difficult few seasons. Mm. Yeah, no, I didn't. You know, we went to Tottenham, and it was a massive club, and. Broke in, both broke into the first team. We had a little taste early on, and then we broke into the first team. I just didn't feel as though I got a fair crack of the whip there. Yeah, yeah, I have a paranoia that the mic's not off. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah I, I felt as though I didn't get a fair crack of the whip there. Um, Hoddle, when I was breaking into the team, brought in Christian Zieger, who played left, left wing back, and whenever he was fit, he played. And there was a spell when Christian Zieger was out with his knee injury, and I played half a dozen games, maybe, maybe nine. Um, and done really well and Christian Zieger had come back and he was straight into the team and I said to him I said to Hoddle well, what's going on he said well I'll, I'll always pick him and I thought I've got no chance here of progressing and I wanted to play um, I was around 20, 21 at the time um, and that's when he let me go to West Ham What was Hoddle like? Tactically and the way he thought about the game he had a brilliant football mind yeah. uh, but as a man at that time, or as a coach, he was a bit different, he was a bit weird. Yeah, I read a few um, autobiographies, Paul Nurse, Robbie Fowl, and they said yeah. more or the same, tactically on the ball, but just a bit, yeah. to quote them, a bit strange. He had an unbelievable a football brain, off. don't get me wrong, and I think, I think he's learned from the way he was as a coach, man to man, um, since. And I think, he, I, you know, I hear him on TV, and everyone might not agree, but I think he talks a lot of sense. Yeah, he does. When he commentates on the football, and I still think he's worth another crack. And he done okay with England in '98, didn't he? Um, this was after that, and it, you know, ability-wise, still in training, he, he was unbelievable. But just as a, as a man manager, probably let himself down a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And then you moved to West Ham uh, as part of sort of a swap deal with is it Freddie Canute. Mm. And what what was it like crossing that divide? Was it met with any hostility or crossing a such a fierce? Yeah, yeah, rival. Um, a little bit, because obviously it's well known that West Ham fans don't like Tottenham. Yeah, um, <laughs> just a bit. <laughs> it, you know, it's, it's their main rivalry apart from Millwall. Um, Spurs are more interested in Arsenal, but there, there still is that tension there, without a doubt. And um, yeah, it, I remember driving to. The, it was we played first, my date. I made my debut against Preston away in the Championship, um, but my first taste of, at home was the League Cup game. And I believe we played, I might be wrong, but I didn't play Russian and Diamonds, but it may have been wrong at, at home. And um, I was walking, driving down Barking Road, and there was a pub full of West Ham fans on the left hand side, and they saw me have a window down, which was a big mistake. Yeah. And they said, uh, they fought back to Tottenham. Did they? Yeah, Jesus. and I thought, oof, I'm in for it here. Um, <laughs> yeah. But luckily, I, I won them round, and I got Player of the Year, that Hammer of the Year that year. So. Yeah. And then after that, you know, it's well documented. I, I had some unbelievable yeah. times there. Yeah. Two playoff finals, an FA Cup final, Hammer of the Year, as I said. Um, and then, then my gambling past took over. You know, what was happening when my gambling took over and um, probably soured my ending. But I, I loved my time at that club. It was, yeah. it was a great football club. I'm mean, going to say you had some magnificent memories. I mean, uh, well, I know it's probably not a great one for you, but also the FA Cup, the Gerrard final. Yeah. That was yeah. such it, a game. It, yeah, I was, you know, 
still haunts me to that to this day. That is, you know, um, and I was lucky to again like the Stoke final, FA Cup final. I was lucky to play in that final as well because I busted my ankle two weeks before in training. Mm-hmm. Christian Daly done me in a tackle and I done all my ligaments and I was in a hyperbaric chamber, <coughs> which they use for um, cancer patients as well in this hospital um, for God a good two weeks, ten days, trying to and it basically gets your blood flowing and. Yeah. Um, gets all the bruising out your your ankle and um, so it helps got it heavily strapped up got loads of cortisone injections and, and I played the, the final luckily and I lasted 85 minutes you assisted Dean Ashton yeah and is that right Dean Ashton it, was, it wasn't a great shot but yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how he spilled it but yeah Dean Ashton come that. in and got the but rebound you did, and yeah. but you did have some you know some highs you you put the assist in for Zamora yeah. to get yeah. last unpromoted yeah effectively. yeah yeah, so yeah, yeah. No, yeah no, like I said I had some unbelievable times there and the first season to get hammer of the year, especially if you look at the names on that trophy, uh, that was that was a big privilege. Um, and yeah, like you said, the, the playoff final, Bobby scoring, and the FA Cup final. Then um, we were in Europe as well. So no, yeah. some fantastic times there, and I, I've I've really had fond memories of that club. Without kind of dragging back a horrible, obviously horrible memory for yourself as a fan, it's awful. But what what did it feel like when that Gerard goal? Went in. I was. It's, I'd literally just come off. Yeah. Well, no, I've been off about eight or nine minutes. Yeah. And, um, someone I'm really close to now, still, um, James Collins, is still at West Ham. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, he was on the bench that day, never got on, and uh, I said to him, "Can you imagine the night we're going to have tonight?" Oh, that's what he said. That's what I said to him. I said, "We're going to be legends." <laughs> and then, literally seconds later, oh. Gerard runs with the ball, and I'm thinking he won't hit that, and he just hits it, and he's mm. yeah. And only. A handful of players can do what he did that day. He single-handedly won on the FA Cup. Yeah, the Gerrard so, final. Um, yeah, it, um, I remember the change room afterwards. We were absolutely devastated. Would you have taken a penno if you were still on? Oh yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. stepped up. I only missed one for Stoke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, against, against West, West Ham. Yeah. <laughs> so then, now we get to the good part for us. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. you came to Stoke for two million in the January transfer mm. window. And what's it like being involved in the transfer window as a player? Obviously, we're in it now. Mm. But what's it like as a player? Do you, you know your, your agents always calling you saying people are interested, or what's it like to be a part of? <laughs> stressful. Yeah, no, you, you just got your phone on you all the time. It's not. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's stressful, but you just make sure your phone's on, on, um, on loud, and just in case anything comes up. And obviously, it's like coming for me, at the bottom of the league at the time. So what and, was it that uh, drew you to us? <laughs> do you know what? It was Tony Pulis, I'm not yeah. going to lie. I went up there and I said, do you know what, I'll speak to them. And um, as soon as I got there, Tony said, come on. I said, where are we going? He goes, we're going in the car. I said, all oh, right, okay. <laughs> so he drove me around the training ground, which wasn't that impressive at the time. It was all port cabins. Yeah, port, this yeah, was yeah. days before yeah. Clayton Wood. Yeah, and Tony was, as I'm sure most fans know, very controlling. <laughs> um, so he drove me to Witchwood Park in Nantwich. I live and he said, like that, yeah. you can live here. And <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, yeah. oh, right, okay, thanks for that. Fo- uh, Ricky Fuller lived there. Yeah, Liam Lawrence Liam lived Lawrence, there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Danny Bill Collins. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there's a few that lived there. Yeah, it's the Stoke you Village. Yeah. The golf course there as well. I said, oh, right, okay, thanks. Um, and he just let basically my agent get on speaking to Tony's goals and sorting out a deal. Um, and then there was still a bit of money owed to me from West Ham. So he couldn't sign that day. And I, once I spoke to Tony, and I've seen his passion for the club. and his vision as well. We had this thing and he was convinced, just got beat by Harlepool in the FA Cup, I think. And he, he yeah, was convinced yeah, yeah. that um, the club were gonna stay up. He was, he was even though we got in the league at the time. Um, and I, he just drew to him. I, I, I drew to him and um, he said, you'll be playing week in, week out. He goes, I think you're a fantastic player. You've lost your way lately. Um, and I just thought, I wanna play for you. And that, that, that was it basically. And couldn't sign that night, as I said, and. Uh, because I've still owed some money for West Ham and once West Ham had that money um, I signed the next day but that night Tony called me about half 11 at night he goes you're not going anywhere else are you and I was like no I promise you Gaffer, I'm not going nowhere else I'm just waiting for this money and um, and that was it I signed the next day what was it What was it like to play for as a manager I love playing for him yeah yeah I loved it he Would was just so black one of those white. managers you'd run through a brick yeah. wall for listen people have got a lot of things to say about him um, across the game in the media fans whatever He's a fantastic manager. I don't think he gets enough credit. I agree. Yeah. And um, what he done for that football club? Oh yeah. Was sensational. FA Cup final. I know we didn't win it. Europe. Europe. You know. 
we stayed up comfortably that first season, mm. and that was due to the signings that he made, I think. And, and you know, I, I think he, he deserves a lot more credit than he gets. I agree. Well, Definitely. What, obviously, Pulis helped persuade you to come, but when you, from someone that's from down south, mm. your agent got in contact with you, Stoke. Yeah. What was your first thought? Because I don't appreciate, I don't, you know, I don't assume that you'd be like. You love oh, hearing what people think I about I do, because it's my <laughs> fault. I want to know that we're, we're well liked and appreciated outside of our little bubble. What yeah. was your first thoughts when you had Stoke were keen? I was think I'll be completely honest. I was thinking, I'd, I'd, I'm not sure. Yeah. That, that's what that was because the club were at the bottom of the league at the time as well, and you know as well, you know that thing about Paddy Power paying out after the, yeah, after just, the first game of the uh, season. Yeah, 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 three, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And, you know, all stuff like that. everyone thought that they were down and that we were down, and you know, but, but, but I had to think about it long and hard. But once I got there, and then once I played that first game against Liverpool at home, I knew I'd made the right decision. And the fans, for the whole time I was there, were literally unbelievable to me. And the sender, forgive me, um, when I played my last game was, was unbelievable. I'll never forget it. Mm. And similar to West Ham, you also got sort of player of the season when you had the first, yeah, yeah. first full season. Yeah. Um, like that, we, we seem to be getting goalkeepers winning that award every year now. Talent I'm worried, not sure what it, it says about the defence, but... <laughs> just a good quality goalkeeper, I'd say. Yeah. yeah. And... A lot, of, a lot of people always ask this. They've asked it to Wilco when we've had Wilco on, Roy when we've had him on. Did you see much of the B.E. Pulis shower incident? What have they said? <laughs> they said, uh, didn't see it. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've seen plenty of it. Don't about that. Um, yeah, I, I think I've spoke about it before. Have you? But, yeah. Maybe I shouldn't have said <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the better PR people. Yeah. Um, and w- at Stoke, you also came pretty close to, well, we think anyway, and I think a lot of the media touted it as well to an England call up. Yeah. Very, yeah. very close before you suffered an yeah. injury. I was close at West Ham as well when I got an injury, unfortunately. I just think it was one of those things that, that weren't meant to be. I played for England 15s, 16s, 18s, 20s, and 21s, and it, it was just one of them things. I think there was periods in my career where I was definitely good enough mm-hmm. but it just didn't happen and that's probably the one regret I've got um, that is I never got an England call up because that would make the world to me but yeah. it just, you it played just at every happen. youth level yeah every youth level I remember yeah. a game against um, I think it's Blackburn at home you scored mm. a really good goal and I remember following that game it was in the press a lot mm. and I was convinced you'd get a call up following mm. that I forget who the manager was at the time well, do, you, do you remember that goal I remember we played Man City away in the FA Cup didn't we yeah one all. Yeah. yeah, and um, yeah, Rick scored, I think. He, he? Yeah. he did, yeah. Um, and I got injured in the first 15 minutes. And Tony Pugh told me before the game, Capello was there to watch me. It was Capello, was And it, I was just thinking, as I was coming off, I was done my bus in my league ligaments. As I come off, I just thought, that's it. it it's just like, yeah. give me a chance, please. Yeah. Just like, yeah. give me a break. But it just, it just wasn't meant to be. It's one of them things. And. Um, I certainly think I was good enough at times during my career and it just didn't happen. Um, Lee Tilston on Facebook uh, put this question to us and it's quite uh, apt for what we're speaking about now. He says, do you think that there's a bias towards certain clubs such as Stoke when it comes to England? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Plenty of clubs, not just Stoke, but there, there is. And Because um, we're not fashionable. Yeah. But I think... I think that's a downfall of England in many respects and I think it has been for a long, long time now. It was the same when I was playing under 16s, under 18s, um, under 21s. It, it was who you played for more than what your form is and yeah. it's been that way for years and I think players know that, especially the players at the top clubs and they become complacent and um, yeah, it, you should be picking players on form and that's it. Yeah. Solely on form. Not, not reputation. Not reputation, not on who they play for. Um, on form alone and uh, not many Eng- England managers have done that if any really yeah. in, in the last few years I mean the big example for us <coughs> in the past few years is Ryan yeah. yeah we think that Ryan should have had a call up plenty yeah, of time that. I've, I've always I've always said that um, and he was judged on one game against Sweden against Zlatan, Zlatan in his peak in, in his peak <laughs> and had an unbelievable game and he come on for what did he come on for half an hour or just towards the yeah. end yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you know and you know Roy Hodgson who I thought was never an England manager in a million years, judged him on that one performance, which I thought was disgraceful. Um, but that is the way it is, you know. It's, 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 um, it's unfortunate. But from that point to up until a year ago, Ryan was definitely worthy of being an England ball. Like I think it's 
I'm going to say as a Stoke fan, I think it's a disgrace he was never given yeah. more of a go and it, it yeah. really aligns with what you say about yeah. trending clubs and stuff like that. I, I think it's shocking. It's, it, yeah, it's just it's just not a good precedent really. Like but you that's, say. Why, that's why England have been useless for so many years though, mm. is because they use that policy. Not just that policy, they use plenty of other policies that aren't right, but that's one of the things that they do and it's wrong. Yeah, I think, I think with Ryan, I, I, I've never kind of gone out of my way to say he should be signing every game, but he wasn't even given a chance. No. That's the big He should be in the squad minimum. Of course, he? he should have had the odd go here and there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely not fair. Definitely, definitely. And um, probably one of the highlights of his Stoke career was the FA Cup run. Yeah. Absolutely mm. tremendous. I mean, we were speaking about it before we started filming, but the semi final was obviously a massive highlight that game yeah. against Bolton. Yeah. And you opened the scoring. Yeah, well what day that was um, <laughs> do you know what I knew I was going to score before that game I just knew it I went yeah. to bed that night I just felt it was meant to be and we were meant to put on a great performance and it's, everything felt right the training on the, the week leading up to it uh, the way the boys were we were so confident um, and I knew I'd score luckily it was you know, a good goal and it was the first goal and, but it was just an unbelievable day it, it was probably the best team performance I've ever been a part of mm. every, every player to a man was was sensational. You know, how many teams do you hear in an FA Cup semi-final when there's so many nerves involved and tension? Go out and win five nil. Yeah. You know, just, and I don't think things went for us necessarily. I just think we were by far the better team. Yeah. We absolutely battered them, and um, I got man of the match as well, which was just, you know, just the perfect day. And I couldn't wish for any better. Really. And we, you met, you touched on it before, but obviously when the final came round, not only yourself, but we had plenty of injury yeah. worries and scares yeah. what sort of percentage fit do you think you were for the final uh, I, I was doing so much work to try and keep my fitness up but where my hamstring it was my hamstring injury I, I was doing swimming uh, on the bike everything you can think of but a game that big you need to be 100% and that's probably 80% um, but the manager well, I've never forget this said to me if you tell me you're fit I trust you and, and, and how do you turn down playing in an FA Cup final course, yeah. I'd already been beat once I wanted to win it so bad mm. um, I actually felt the, the, the frustrating thing is I actually felt that I was getting better as the game went on the first couple of minutes there, there was a ball played to me and I didn't trust it I'd done, I'd done some sprinting the day before we trained at Watford's training ground and I'd done some sprinting and it was fine but I didn't just trust to sprint 100% so it took me a while to get used to it and to trust it completely that it wasn't going to go again. Um, but I felt I was getting better as the game wore on and I put a ball through for Kenwin where he should have scored. Yeah, that haunts um, me. Yeah. Haunts. I can see it goes to Meg Hart. Yeah, think. exactly. Just, yeah. It, it Near me. post. Um, yeah. And before I know it, 55 minutes in, he's brought me off. And I busted my backside to get fit for that final and I was absolutely devastated he took me off because I felt like I was getting into the game. Obviously, I'm not saying we would have won it if I'd have said on the pitch, but... I just felt like I was getting my confidence up. I was getting my second wind because I've not played for a while. Um, but but he uh, decided to substitute me. So I've always spoke to him about that. <laughs> and, uh, I felt so we got into it. I mean, yeah. fr from memory, we did get a bit overrun in the first half. Mm. Tommy Torrenson was on fire. Yeah, they were much better team than first. Yeah, half. they were. But I, I did. I remember turning to my dad, was saying, nil nil still. They just mm. missed another good chance. I think Kenwin chance. I turned to my dad. So we're going to do this. We're going to mm. do this. And then Yaya yeah, yeah, Torre yeah. did his thing, yeah. broke our hearts, yeah. Got horrible. It. Horrible feeling. Got all somber now. Yeah. I know, yeah. <laughs> I want to knock some head. I know. Got it. But we did have, uh, obviously, the follow up from the FA Cup finals. We had a season in Europe, mm. which was absolutely mental. Stoke in Europe. Yeah. What was it like playing in the Europa League? Do you know what? He never played me in an away game. Just, you just, just the I home. played the home games because he wanted. We, we that, really that struggled the, in the, the Premier League. Mm. You know, he was like, criticised for that. Yeah, and if you look at our fixtures, I think nearly every one of them, if not all of them, were away from home after we were away, away in Europe. And the lads just weren't used to it. But like we were getting back on the after the game on the Thursday night, like three or four in the morning. We had Kiev, you know. And I've heard this argument so many times, and they say, oh, you know, you're professional footballers, you're meant to be fit, and... It shouldn't affect you on the Sunday, but it does. Yeah. It affects you mentally and physically. I don't care what no one says, unless you've done it and you've tried it, it does affect you. Um, and it affected the team. And you know, I remember we played Bolton um, 
away after a game and got beat 5 0 or something, didn't we? That was their revenge. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. yeah. Well, I'd, I'd rather do what we saw. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but you're right, I mean, yeah. we were in what, Turkey, Kiev, and Israel. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> but and you look at most English Premier League clubs that are in Europe, they've got home games more often than not, all half and half. Every one of our games was away from home. But can, the gaffer was very paranoid about the Premier League were like yeah. on us and it was kind of a siege mentality us against them but you can understand why sometimes but, you know how can we have a away game every single time we play away from home it's just not right and it, did re- it really affected us at times Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but it was an unbelievable experience and we uh, played in the, most of the home games and Valencia etc and um, yeah well I thought we'd done brilliantly to get did you feel a bit aggrieved Valencia specifically away because Oh, yeah, I'd, 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 I'd have loved to have played. The team out there wasn't our first no, time, yeah. nowhere near and it. They've done well, to be fair, didn't they? They you did. Know, they kept us they in did, the game, yeah. and um, I played in the home leg, and they, they were just too savvy for us. Yeah. But yeah, I, it's the Messiah. I, I was devastated. It's incredible. The best ground I've ever been. Did didn't you even know travel you for that? Oh, okay. Didn't travel to Kiev. Um, yeah, one, of, one, one of Pulis's lasting sort of things on the club is a lot of people criticising for that team selection. and. Yeah. Not going for it. We didn't have we didn't have a massive squad though. That's no. that's my point. And we were struggling in the league, especially away from home after those European fixtures. And yeah, I I, I can see where he was coming from. Um, you know, he, everyone thinks he should have played a decent team against Valencia at home. I probably agree, but the game before that, I think he got it right. Yeah. And. Obviously, you had a lot more to your Stoke City career, but you, you spoke about it um, previously, the send-off. Mm. Like, why does it live so long in your memory? Why did it mean so much? I just so didn't much? think that I would get the send-off that I did, and it was just incredible. Um, obviously, it was good of Mark Hughes to put me on as well. He didn't have to do that, so I'm forever thankful for him for doing that. Um, and then the game against where from away put me on again. And But it was just, you know, singing my name, at the Britannia um, when I come on it's just something that will, I look back on it now it's just something that will always live with me and, and the reception the last game of the season against West Brom away yeah just forever grateful for that I, I didn't expect it um, and yeah it's just something that will live with me forever did, did you know that how valued you were by Stoke did you not know up until no, that point I just think probably not no but purely because I'm a big believer in it. When, when a player's been at a club for so long, I wasn't there for ages, I was there for five and a half years. I think fans become complacent in what they actually expect expect or think that player has done for the club. Yeah. They'd rather get on his back because he's an easy target because he's yeah. in the club. And I was getting a little bit of sticks towards the end of my time at Stoke from certain um, parts of the crowd that I, you know, I can hear, etc. Et um, which is fine, it comes with the territory, it's not a problem. but just to hear that I was actually really appreciated for my time there meant so much to me. It's good because I, I feel quite, well, very confident in saying, I, I feel this, and I think a lot of Stoke fans would agree, you're still the best winger we've had in the Prem. And I mean that above, ironically, and now to it, you just moved. I still mm. think you're our best winger to spin up comfortably. <laughs> Thank you. Comfortably for me. I'm not saying that just because you're better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I strongly feel that. I know my family does as well. You said it previously mate. on the podcast. I've told, yeah, I've mentioned that to you before. Yeah, so I'm, it's not, I'm not surprised oh, yeah. you've got this legacy at Stoke. Yeah, no, it was Stoke helped me in so many ways. Obviously, when I when I first signed, with my issues um, with my gambling, but I like to think I repaid repaid Stoke mm. as well. So it was yeah. a, it was a match made in heaven, and I, I loved my time there. And, you know, we had some unbelievable years, and then it was just um, yeah, it was brilliant. Definitely did your bit for the club. Yeah. Um, yeah. How did Mark Hughes differ from Tony Pulis? Complete opposite. Complete opposite. <laughs> <laughs> Complete opposite. Um, in a good way, bad way, different. Depends what you like. You know? yeah. um, listen, I've always said this. We first come into the club, well, his training was fantastic. Um, very quiet. Don't know really where you stand. I didn't have that personal relationship that I had with Tony Pulis. I could go to Tony Pulis and ask him anything, mm. and he could do the same to me. And if he wasn't happy with me, he'd tell me. If I wasn't happy with him, as in, you brought me off too early, I could actually go to him and say, Gaffer, you brought me off too early, you tell me to F off, but I, I just could still know I yeah. could do it just for my own peace it's of just mind. just that rapport. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, I didn't have that with Hughes, and he brought an out pitch in. He started me for the first few games of his first season there, but he was, I was only a stopgap, and I knew that as well. That's probably why my performances weren't great. 
and then Arnautovic come in and uh, he, he put him straight in the side, which is fine. And you know, he was he was honest with me. And I'll always say his training was good. He's got good ideas. Um, it just I always felt maybe because he knew how close mine and Pulis's relationship was. I think that might have hindered it you. Might have hindered and hindered me as well. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm completely wrong there. But that, that could have been a factor, and that's what I think. But you know, like I said, towards the end of my my year there, my, my contract was up at the end of that season, and he was good enough to give me um, you know the send offs. He didn't have to do that. He couldn't. He didn't have to bring me on, and uh, he did. So Should have a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And. Obviously, you retired with a back injury. Did, mm. Is it still causing you trouble, or are you absolutely fine now? Or uh, do things like that live with you? Or? Yeah, no. Yeah, I'm still cutting the grass today, and it's killing me. So, and I try and keep on top of it, and you know, do loads of core stuff and Pilates, etc. But um, where I've trained for so long, I mean, you know, training day in day out for 20 years, I don't. It's not always easy to motivate yourself to do that. Um, but I need to do it, otherwise, I get pain in my back. So. I try and do as much as I can. And what is the now for you outside of football? I know we've spoken about it previously off the <laughs> podcast, but a bit of journalism work? Yeah, I still do some stuff in the media from time to time. Um, I've got a, a golf business with, um, ironically, my friend Simon Davis, who I moved to Spurs with. Um, known him since I was 12 years old. And yeah, I'm, I'm looking maybe to get back into football. Um, I'm really not at the stage where I want to get into coaching right now. It may change in, in the in the near future, but um, I still watch loads of football. Um, but I love my golf as well. So yeah, golf's a big one apparently. Yeah, you, I you love, love my golf. Yeah, I, I watch the PGA Tour, European Tour, all of it, at all of it, and uh, drives the missus mad. I love it. <laughs> and some fans still point to you as like like oh, Craig has just done it just as a, as a winger that we need. We've for so long at Stoke now we've seemed to have inverted wingers yeah. who yeah. don't just beat a man and cross. I mean, can few and far between. They're just There's a dying really breed. Anymore, no. Dying breed. I'll tell you what, I'd say Ramadan is he's an inverted winger where you can play inside, but he, I like him. He can also yeah. be a player on the outside as yeah. well. He's a little, he's got a little bit of old school in him. Do you see which potential I like. in him? I do. I like him. I, I do. I definitely see potential there. I think away from home last season got the better of him, and he was a little bit, you know, he wasn't in the game too much. But at home, he, he had some fantastic performances. So. I definitely think the potential there is whether he grows into the position now Marco's left. Um, but I also think Shakiri's got to step up. Do you think? Well, yeah, yeah we, I, I think we'll all agree I'm just on that one. No. It's glimpses, yeah. but generally no, not consistent not good enough, enough. For, yeah. for the, um, the standard he's played played at, um, for the money he's on, and, and his, you know the reputation that come with him. He's got to do better than he's doing at the minute, and hopefully this season will be the season. Do you? Would you rather Stoke? Persist with Ramadan out on the left, or do you think that they need to, you know, make I a light for another one in for cover, or you know? But I think Ramadan should get his chance this season. I think they should give him half a dozen games to start the season um, and see how he goes. Because I definitely see a player there. And on a whole, what did you make of Stoke last season? Obviously, it was one for regression <coughs> for the, the majority of us. We didn't yeah, see it as I, a I great season. I didn't see him improve. I think since Mark Hughes has been there, and I think he's, it wasn't easy shoes to fill in, in Tony Pulis. Um, although the fans wanted the change at the time, it still isn't easy, and, and he's done a brilliant job. Um, the first two seasons I've seen improvement. Last season, mm. I didn't see an improvement. I, I watched the Spurs game um, when they played Spurs away from home. Four nil at half time. Yeah, we were in yeah. the concourse. And yeah. I, I, I've not seen a performance like that for a long, long time. I thought it was really, really poor, and I thought this, this, this side hasn't improved that much. And um, that's what I'll look to see this season if, if they can. I'm hearing there's a few mumblings up, you know, up there with the Stoke fans, and um, it'll, I think he needs to get off to a good start. He does. I mean, it is a bit tense at the moment, but mm. it is pretty tense, and he's got yeah. he's got by no means an easy start to the season no. with the fixture list. Exactly. Yeah. So it will, it will be a testing testing yeah. time for Mark Hughes yeah. if there's if there's no results. And I just worry looking season. at the squad. Obviously, I think Zuma's a decent signing. Very decent signing, but it's, it's a stopgap signing. It's a loan, yeah. it's a year. Yeah. Um, Fletcher again, a decent signing, but he's coming towards the end of his career. And, um, I just look at the team, and I worry really. I'll, yeah. I'll be completely honest. I do. Departures of John Walters and Glenn Whelan's and Bardsley to a lesser extent. 
don't know, do you think Eric's the, the, the DNA? They're, they're, they're people that in that changing room will be big voices and yeah, big characters and ground people as well, not let people get out of their, you know, get too big for their boots. Mm. Um, and I keep seeing more and more of those kind of players leaving the club and I think it's a massive that's mistake. Thinking, yeah. but was, that's my opinion and I hope I'm wrong, um, but we'll, we'll see. Yeah. I always feel the, the, the peak under Hughes the first two seasons, I think, mm. it coinc- I think look, he kind of stumbled across the, the grit of the Pulis here with lads. maybe his flair. And exactly. Not only got lucky, but it, it dropped well. Yeah. He took over a good a good squad of people. Yeah, great spine. Not players, good squad of people. Yeah. And, and that's the main thing. When we played just before the semi-final of the FA Cup, Tony Pulis pulled us round in a huddle, and I'll never forget this, and he said, I've never coached a b- better group of people and men in my life. He said, you're all good people, you're proper people, and you work for each other. And I'll never forget that. I looked round and I thought, do you know what? You're so right. There was there was no idiots. You know, it, there was maybe the odd one or two, but they get told. And we just worked so hard for each other. And I think, again, I hope I'm wrong. I just think Mark Hughes is getting away from that now. And with the likes of Wheelow going, I know Wheelow's not going to play every week, maybe at the minute. But keep him there. Keep Wolves there. Waltz is still invaluable for me. He's still scored goals when he plays. Scoring for Burnley now. Exactly. You know, I just don't get it. I, I really don't. But we'll see. They are. They are. You know, they, these are decisions that will either you know make or break Mark Hughes yeah. come yeah. season. Um, obviously, there's been one overarching transfer story that's happened this summer uh, with Arnautovic going to West Ham. What do you make of all that and the move? I think Stoke have got a good price for him personally, um, but I think. Um, Mark is a funny one. I, I think he's a fantastic player. I think he's got an unreal ability. Um, he frustrates the life out of me at times. Going back to that Spurs game when he got beat 4 0, he, he was just anonymous. You know, he didn't want to know. He, he was, it just showed in his body language. And you can't carry players like that at times. And, and that's probably his fault. But he's had some un- unbelievable games for Stoke City. And he's a fantastic player. No question in his talent whatsoever. They have a lot more talent than me. I'm happy to admit that. I just think that um, if he was to get his head screwed on properly, he could be a real, real, a real top talent. player. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And I think West Ham fans will love him because they love that kind of maverick player, so the Payes, the Canyos, yeah. etc. Um, but I also think they'll get to about Christmas time and they'll start. He'll start driving them mad a little bit. And that's just the way Marco is. But I think it's a good deal for both clubs. I think it'd be good for West Ham, but it's, it's, a, good, it's a good amount of money for Stoke. I mean, have you ever been involved or known another player sort of had, have the head turned in a, in a deal? It, unexpected. Because <coughs> it did come as a shock. You know, there was yeah, co- not that I can recall, but the, the thing is, and this, I was there for Marco's first season. Marco's a great lad in the change room. He's not a disruptive influence whatsoever, I will say that. Even though some people might yeah, view him as that. Exactly, yeah, he's not. But... He's one of them that if he was to get his head turned, that's it. Once he makes a decision, he's off. And obviously he's got his brother in his ear as well. That doesn't help. And it was just, they had to sell him Stoke, I think. They didn't have an option. I think Mark Hughes has come out and said that since. Um, unfortunate, so, but obviously Stoke are a much better side with Marco in the team. There's no doubt about that. Um, but they had to get their money for him and it was a decent amount of money in the end. It was. Uh, we go now to some questions from our uh, listeners, viewers, wherever they're watching us. There's some daft ones, there's some normal ones. Right. Uh, Sam Glover, red or brown sauce? Red. Yeah, good decision. I give it brown. It depends, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, no, no, it doesn't. I'm red or brown. <laughs> Luke Keverin and Matthew Renwick say favourite moments at Stoke? First goal in the semi final. First goal. So, yeah. yeah. What beats that, really? Good. Chris Ramsbottom says pig gate. What happened? Oh God! <laughs> wow, how about that? <laughs> Another one we can't say. <laughs> no, I think yeah, we can. Let's not do that. It was um, Hoofy and Waltz were thick as thieves, and there was pranks being played every morning in training. Just the stuff in your shoes, um, you know, chili powder in your boxes, you name it. Deep heat in your boxes, you name it. It was all going on. So, and I, I was involved in it as well. I think I got Waltz. I can't even remember what I got him with. Um, it was like the week before the end of the season, and we were doing our warm up um, for our last game. I think we had Southampton away, and we were travelling down that day. And um, but I was a bit wary because I, I knew they were planning something. I was thinking I was involved in the warm up, and I was trying to get my back loose and off and that. 
and Walks has like ran down. I thought, oh, he's just going, he's going for, he's going to the toilet. I've come back in, and it, him and Hoofy have conspired to get this pig's head <laughs> and stick it in my locker and wrap it in my clothes, right? <laughs> so I've come in from training, and they what? Well, I knew something was going on halfway through training because they're geeking away. I'm thinking they've done something here, and um, come in and. My locker is absolutely stinking, like stinking. So I've lost my head. <laughs> and I thought it was Wheelo. And it wasn't Wheelo, anyway. But <laughs> it, uh, Kenwin Jones is getting changed next to him. And I've gone into thinking it's Wheelo's locker, gone into Kenwin's locker and got all Kenwin stuff and wrapped the pig's head up in that. <laughs> but it's, it's Hoofy and Waltz that have done it. <laughs> so Kenwin then got a brick <laughs> and thought it was Wheelo that had done this to Kenwin and chucked it through Wheelow's window of the car, <laughs> then Wheelow's gone absolutely mental um, and kicked off. I've already gone in the car by now because I'm fuming and uh, Wheelow's text me saying you're out of order, it wasn't even me. And yeah, it took about three or four days to get that sorted. So then we'll Walters sort it out. and Hoover just uh, chilling yeah, I, got, in the I got them back, don't worry, got them back good. But, um, back for Wheeling there, didn't you? Yeah. Did oh, funny, yeah. funny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Luke Bridgewater and Josh Mason say best player played with. Well, at Stoke. Anywhere. Anywhere. Carlos Tevez. At Stoke then, as well? <sighs> not good ones. Pure ability and strength, Rick. Yeah. yeah. Um, Wilco said the same. But... I'd say... Ryan has been unbelievable for Stoke City. Um, not someone you often hear. No, but I, I just I respect him so much as a as a lad first and foremost, and a captain. He doesn't really say much, Ryan. He just he leads by example. But and, and he was for the five and a half years I was there, he was sensational. So yeah, Ryan, Rick, um, Rick and Ryan. I'm Rick sorry. and Ryan. And uh, Marcus Hagen says best player you played against Ronaldo, Cristiano. Mm. What, what was, was it like? Um, he just said everything. He was was he on your wing then? Was he playing right, <laughs> right side? Um, he, he, he switched really. I mean, the first time I came up against him was with England 21s. We played Portugal away, and um, you had Ronaldo on one wing, Cresma on the other. Uh, Paul Konchesky was left back, who I later played with at West Ham. And I can't remember. I think it was David Wright, the ex-crew man at right back, yeah. I think. Um, and they were sensational. I can't tell you how good they were. Um, and that's when I first saw him. Conch was nearly crying at the end of the game, Francesco, but he was just completely ruined it. Um, so yeah, Ronaldo, without a doubt. But Charisma was, wasn't far behind him that day. He was in, yeah, he never really it. reached he his... No. He played against him in the Europa League for Besiktas. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt a talent. Yeah, great player. No yeah. doubt. Yeah. Um, you've already answered this one, but Mitchell Brooks asks, what was it like to play under two at Tony Pulis? But you yeah, loved it. Okay. I've not got a bad word to say about him. He, he was... It was frustrating at times, don't get me wrong, but we always got results. And, you know, I know the fans got bored of that after a while, and I can see that. I can see that point of view as well. Um, but it, it was a proper team. And you don't, as, as I said earlier, you don't get that often. We work so hard for each other. And in the Premier League these days, or in any league, you just don't get that. And it was just a privilege to be part of that team. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Mitchell, uh, Henry, the Dutch Potter, lastly asks, would you ever take a coaching role at Stoke eventually? Yeah, without a doubt. Of course I would. I'd love to. Um, I just, at the minute, it's not the right time in my life to, to go into coaching, but I, I would definitely do it. Definitely. Yeah. Hopefully we do. See you, see you what, back in Stoke Colours yeah. one day. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming on Bear Pit Podcast. Absolute pleasure, mate. Pleasure, mate. Pleasure. Yes. Um, yeah. If you do want to try and win a signed shirt by Matty, Berahino, Rory, uh, go and leave us a review on iTunes. Do go like, comment, subscribe, wherever you're watching or listening. And see you later.